So I put myself on the back burner for my patients, but just for them to complain to me about the smallest things really just It is your nurse Bay Carly Ray, and today I'm coming at you guys with an expectation versus reality type of video, but nursing based. If so, if you guys are interested in this, then just keep on watching the video. All right, y'all. So let's get into it. Like, let's no intro, no none of that. Let's just get straight into this topic. So I was searching the internet and I was looking for videos to just kind of spark my interest that I could kind of recreate and put on my channel as well. So I came across these videos that were expectation versus reality nursing edition and I was just like, "Hey, that is a super dope topic to do a to do a video about." So, I decided to go ahead and bring it to you guys. The number one expectation that I had going into nursing was that we were going to be these great lifesavers like you see on Grey's Anatomy and I was going to be doing CPR and everything was going to be crazy and chaotic and I was going to be the one that was right there in the mix of everything, calling all the shots and you know, I was going to be glorified when the patient came back and then years later down the line, the patient was going to come back and thank me and all of this, I had all of these big dreams that all of this is going to happen within nursing, but reality wise, that's not how it happens. In reality, you are a lifesaver. I will say that, but it's not how Grey's Anatomy makes it, it seem. Goes. I can count on one hand how many times I've actually just right. done a CPR and obtained ROSC. And for those of you who do not know what ROSC is, ROSC is Return of Spontaneous Circulation. So, and mind y'all, I've been in the ER for about seven years now. So, literally on one hand, I can count how many patients of mine, particularly, that we have obtained ROSC. Now, a lot of your CPRs, there will be unfortunate events and you will not be able to get your patients back even after doing several good rounds of CPR and giving epi and things of that such. But I can literally count on one hand how many times that has actually happened and where the cold actually got my adrenaline running and I was excited and things were going great and we saved the patient and not one time has a patient come back after obtaining ROSC come back to thank me personally as their nurse or that nursing staff or any of that. So. I just don't want y'all thinking that it's going to be like how Grey's Anatomy is and because that is not the case. It is not. So another thing is the nurse to patient ratios. Like in nursing school, y'all, they teach y'all that you guys will be in this safe world and y'all will have these perfect scenarios and the doctors will be right there to help you. They teach you all of this in nursing school. So going from nursing school into actually emergency room nursing, the nurse to patient ratios are extremely crazy to me. The facility that I just left was a level two trauma center and their nursing ratios at one point was a five to one. I don't know if you guys have ever worked in the emergency room or have, have you ever even been inside an emergency room, but the emergency room is very, very busy. Those patients are there for emergencies, but don't get me wrong, you do have those cough, cold congestion patients and you know it makes your patient load a little bit easier, but a lot of the times, these patients are sick and the demographic area that I was in, that was a sick population of people. So I, in one room, I could really have a chest pain with positive cardiac history that I had to keep my eye on. Um, I could have an SVT in the next room and I, I could have a patient that's needing to go up to, upstairs to the ICU that is on a insulin drip. And also in the next room, I could have a stroke. So. A lot of the times the nurse to patient ratios are not safe and I truly feel like it's not the actual nurse manager or your charge nurse that's actually making you take those unsafe amount of patients. It's actually management up from higher up that sees that, oh, hey, she only has two patients. I think she can take two more because I've actually had sit downs with my charge nurse and said, hey, this day was a bad day. Like this day was truly unsafe. And I can tell you firsthand, my charge nurse herself basically said that the management sometimes will come down to them and say, hey, 
they need to take more patients or this needs to happen or this needs to happen, which is typically unsafe. So with those nurse to patient ratios, you just got to be really, really safe and really, really effective and be really, really good with your time management skills. Because if not, then that nurse to patient ratio can actually affect you and harm your patients. So another expectation that I had was that I was going to have all these thank yous and my patients were going to tell me i appreciate you for being a nurse thank you for being my nurse you are so awesome today but honestly it's not that y'all i literally had a patient the other day like not even thank me for taking care of their child but she was more so concerned about the TV. So they came to the emergency room and they're sick, don't get me wrong, and I've done all X, Y, and Z for your kid and I expect to have a thank you, but it was more so of a complaint that I got because they were in a room with the TV not working. So, I mean, it's those type of patients right there that really just make me really really mad because i'm like hey i'm doing everything that i can to save your family member but yet you're yelling at me because your tv doesn't work I'm it just really bugs me at the amount of people that don't even say thank you they actually to me come off as in like oh you're supposed to do this like you know and don't get me wrong that's what i went to school for but at the same time a thank you can go a very long way y'all we are stressed we put ourselves to the side we are very selfless people um we sometimes even have to cut down a break if we even get a break at all and not to mention how many times i have had to hold my pee just because i had a critical patient or something of that sort or some things that i needed to go to get done immediately right then and there so i put myself on the back burner for my patients but just for them to complain to me about the smallest things really just gives me a sour taste in my mouth like about our society at times because it's like yes true enough this is my job but at the end of the day I still like that thank you that thank you goes a very long way with nurses another expectation that I had was that you know when break time came that me and all my friends could go up to the cafeteria and we could all eat lunch and have our 30 minute to an hour type of break and we could come back down and resume patient care Honey, working in the emergency room that does not happen like that like the last facility honestly that i left we barely got a break i barely could get a pee break in y'all like i'm not even kidding you so what we would do is say hey I'm running upstairs to go grab some food. So we would run upstairs to the cafeteria, grab food and come back down and eat it at our desk. You get what I'm saying? Because we didn't have that time to go sit down and eat our food, let alone did we have the staff to cover us while we went on break. So that was another huge reality check for me because I was just kind of like, I, I thought in nursing school, we got breaks. Like we, we got to schedule when we wanted our breaks. Like but I can't get a break now like huh like nobody's here to watch my patients like so another expectation that I had you guys is that I was gonna go into nursing and I was gonna make all this money sis and I was really just about to blow up right, like now that you've got your check do you plan on quitting your job driving this truck I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> Sis, no, not at all, not at all. I remember working my first emergency room job, which was in my hometown, by the way, and my starting base pay was $21 an hour. Okay, so once again, y'all already know I'm the queen of getting her coin, honey. So I'm gonna do this math with y'all. So at my facility that I started out at, they would do a 4-3 rotation, which means that um, I would work three days one week and four days the next week. And so I'm kind of scheduled one day of overtime. And also I did work night shifts, so we'll factor in that differential as well. So let's do the math really quick. My base pay was $21 an hour, like I said, when I first started out seven years ago. And the night shift differential seven years ago was $3. So now my $21 has become $24. Okay, we got that established, $24. Okay, so now let's do the math. $24 times 84 hours, which is your seven days 
for that pay period that you have worked because remember you're on a three you're on a three four rotation so that come out to be 84 hours so 24 times 84 equaled it equal two thousand and sixteen dollars all right so you may think that boom that's a lot of money right sis right so no you're you're forgetting all about taxes okay so let's take out about five hundred dollars for taxes and i'm just being gracious with that five hundred dollars sis so now your two thousand has just become one thousand five hundred and sixteen dollars okay so let's take out insurance so your insurance is maybe like a hundred dollars each pay peer so minus 100 okay so now your take home pay after taxes and insurance has become $1,416, which is not a lot of money, you guys. Like, if you're bringing that home every two weeks, that means you're only bringing $2,832 a month, which is not a lot to live on. I just don't want y'all to get caught up in the hype thinking that, oh, when I get out of nursing school, I'm gonna be making all this money, and, you know, it's gonna be on and pop it. It's, it's not that, sis, it's really not that. Not when you have to factor in, oh, now I have to pay student loans back. Oh, now I want my own place. Oh, now I wanna upgrade my car. Not to like something fancy, not at all. You just wanna upgrade your car to a more dependable, a more dependable and a reliable car. So if you factor all that in, your bills may actually come out to be two to three thousand dollars, honestly. Which, if you're only bringing in twenty eight hundred dollars a month, that only leaves you with eight hundred dollars a month to to play with. You get what I'm saying? So that's not a lot of money starting out, and I don't want you guys to be discouraged or anything like that because don't get me wrong, there is money in nursing you just got to learn how to game the system so if you guys would like to learn how to game the system then look up below this video whether it be on this side or this side i will have a icon and i will show you guys exactly how it was i was able to double my income when i first started out as a nurse and i'll show you exactly how to game the system this method works because trust me i'm still using this method today sis and you already know i'm collecting my coin sis so if you guys do have any more expectation versus realities or any little funny comments or anything like that please leave them down below because y'all this is meant to be like a little funny video but yet very educational because the things that they teach you guys in nursing school how to be this perfect realm and everything will be perfect you will be saved everybody will be there to help you it is that's that's not how it goes sis. that's not how it goes so if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to comment like and subscribe and i will see y'all in my next nursing video have a good day babes bye